Welcome back, my friends, to update three for the touchscreen mini panel. This update is applicable for Flight Sim 2020. For those who are new to this do-it-yourself project, there will be links at the end of this video to previous episodes. The main theme for this update is to continue to leverage the capability of the SPAT.next interface, allowing us to target functions based on individual aircraft. The added features to the mini panels are a customized page for ice protection and interior-exterior light controls, new profiles for two mods, the CJ4 by Working Title and the AV20 from Fly-by-Wire. OK, let's start walking through our new profiles. Why did I pick these two aircraft? Well, they are both quite popular. Each is complex enough to deserve customized pages, and SPAT.next has access to some of the controls. First, the working title CJ4. In my opinion, it may well be the mod with the most functional FMC yet. Therefore, the mini panel will focus on the autopilot and the navigation. The general autopilot user interface is capable of operating the CJ4. The only new feature in this page is the ability to step the altitude in increments of 100 or 1000 feet, selectable by touching the number here. You can tell by the indicator below the number. If you are familiar with the CJ4, then you know that its PFD and MFD are controlled with their own groups of buttons and knobs on the panel. The display control panel is used for manipulating the PFD. It's represented by this panel page. All the controls that works in the mods are reproduced here. The four encoders are mapped to the two knobs. Basically, the buttons on the mini panel correspond to those on the cockpit panel one to one. As for the barometer setting, you have to adjust that in the situation page. Next, the MFD is controlled by the cursor control panel located below the screens. And the mini panel has another page to mimic that operations. Keep in mind that a few of the buttons and knobs are not modeled by working title yet. Some of the controls are either not operational or the necessary external interface doesn't yet exist. It is fair to say that the CJ4 support is the moving target for the touchscreen mini panel. Speaking of moving target, to an even larger extent, there is the A32NX project from Fly-by-Wire which is our next aircraft profile in waiting. This aircraft profile has only one custom page, Autopilot, which is borrowed from the X-Plane Tallest implementation. The layout is rather busy. On the top half, you have the control and the readouts to handle the flight control unit. The fog encoders adjust the four numbers. That's obvious. The button on the encoder support the push and pull operations. Push to engage managed mode. A long push for the selected mode.
The second half of the screen gives you the buttons and knobs to play with the navigation display. There are still some missing interface for this A V twenty. For example, the flight director buttons do not light up and the auto brakes buttons are not able to control the sim. Lastly, we also have a new customized page used by all FS2020 aircraft to deal with ice protection and illumination. The old devices page is being phased out by this new customized page. Here's what it looks like. Why do we need this? Because the control to handle icing and the lights vary between aircraft. The buttons here are only semi-configurable. What that means is they can take on different functions based on the aircraft in use, but it does require adding code to support different planes. At this point, we have about a dozen Asobo aircraft supported. For other uncustomized aircraft, the buttons default to a generic profile, same as in the old devices page. We have five buttons for ice protection and up to 10 buttons for the lights. Their functions are self-explanatory. It also makes use of the rotaries for brightness adjustment where possible. Here is what the page can do. There is also a tiny scale next to the control to show you the intensity of the particular objects. In some aircraft, not all the lights and screens are externally controllable. Before we go, I would like to show you a website from a viewer who has actually built a mini panel. He has written a very nice blog on his experiences consists of a four-part article covering many things from the Arduino software installation through the electronics assembly to building an aluminum box for it. If you are wondering whether you can take on this do-it-yourself project, this can help you. The link will be in the description. The webpage was written in Japanese. Let Google translate for you. There you have it, update 3 for the touchscreen mini panel. As you may expect, the SPAT.next interface software is required for this version. As usual, see the design documents for more details. You can download all the files from the link in the description. Ah, one more thing, guess what? I finally put the whole contraption into a box. What do you think? Thanks for watching. Be seeing you.